are question and answer practices in spiritual seeking. Include a portion when you shoot your conceptual arrow. It's as if meeting in a large field with you at one end and the answer coming from the other. And the meadow is the truth. The space is the truth. The presence that permeates everything is the truth. Yet, if you don't understand it, you fire a conceptual arrow saying, this is what I believe. This is the query I have. Additionally, if you fire a conceptual arrow, answers will be return fired. And if we're fortunate, the tips of those two arrows will collide. Also, if they collide tip to tip in midair, they both explode. Another invitation and chance is to observe the space that follows from the reciprocal destruction of those two ideas. If you still don't understand, you'll shoot another conceptual arrow, how about this? So the answer simply shoots back, hitting tip to tip, and bang. In essence, it's about the mutual destruction of ideas, opinions, and worldviews. And all that's left is the consciousness that it's happening in. It is the truth, that's where all the wisdom is. It's not in either of our mental arrows, yours or mine. Yours is only intended to strike mine. It's similar to these words in that they are untrue. They are only intended to stir up ideas inside of you. Also, it's possible that they'll hit tip to tip and reveal space. Of course, that existed prior to our even throwing the thoughts out there. That state of consciousness existed before we shot the conceptual arrow since it is the environment in which we are shooting the arrows. The arrows might be many things, including our inquiries. They could represent our demands that things go this way or that way. Whatever it is, we are simply piercing consciousness with it. Consciousness doesn't care. Innocence doesn't mind. Nevertheless, when those ideas collide and destroy one another, that is the opportunity to awaken as the space in which all of this is taking place. When we realize this, we cease giving our conceptual arrows any more weight, since we are already what all of our concepts are searching for. The space from which the inquiries arise is already within you. That's all there is to it, you are that space. Any spiritual discourse, book, or sutra is thus nothing more than a mental arrow. What does the mind do though? The mind grabs the arrow and believes that the truth is contained within the arrow. It then begins to examine the arrow and begins to gather the arrows into a small package. After it receives numerous arrows, it begins to feel secure. It has a ton of weapons at its disposal, huge stockpile to defend itself. And until it doesn't, that is what happens. The mind functions in that manner, a collection of philosophical arrows. Therefore, it makes no difference how many arrows you have. Life is constantly taking another shot. Life also has a higher purpose than you do. It never stops shattering you. Did you ever pay attention? The blessing, then, is realizing that it doesn't matter whether our conceptual demands, emotional demands, or conceptual arrows are met or unmet in this time. Well, it is not the point. When we realize it, we cease breaking apart. We give up trying to find ourselves in ideas or even in certain emotional experiences. We begin to recognize the fundamental condition of being that existed before all of that. 
Also, it occurs both in the midst of and following all of that. You are that state of existence. You become the after the awakening because you no longer have a relationship with it. It is not being objectified elsewhere. It only takes a fraction of a second for it to disclose itself and awaken. If you can let go of your need for this condition of silence and any other demands you may have upon it, 